Welcome to iLecture Online and here are a couple more examples of how to take the derivatives of two trigonometric functions. Let's start with the first one. We have a quotient, so we're going to use a quotient rule here. f prime of x is equal to the denominator, tangent of x, times the derivative of the numerator, cosecant of x. And as you can see here, the, deriv the derivative of the cosecant of x is minus cosecant of x times the cotangent of x. Minus the cosecant of x times the cotangent of x. So now we have the denominator times the derivative of the numerator. Whenever I stop in the middle, I'd like to go back and make sure I still have everything right. Now it's minus the numerator, which is the cosecant of x, times the derivative of the denominator, and the derivative of the tangent of x is the secant squared of x. And then we take the whole thing and divide it by the denominator squared tangent of tangent squared of x. All right, now, notice that we have the product here of the tangent of x times the cotangent of x, and that's equal to 1 because the tangent is sine over cosine, cotangent is cosine over sine, multiply those together, that becomes 1. So f prime of x is equal to minus the cosecant of x minus the cosecant of x times the secant square of x, all divided by the tangent square of x. Now notice that in the numerator we can factor out a cosecant of x and take out the negative as well. So f prime of x is equal to minus the cosecant of x times 1 plus the secant square of x and then the whole thing divided by the tangent square of x. Then to make sure we cannot simplify this anymore, remember that the secant of x is 1 over the cosine, so this would be 1 over the cosine square of x, and the tangent square of x is the sine square of x over the cosine square of x, and then notice that in the numerator you have 1 over the cosine square of x, in the denominator you have 1 over the cosine square of x, and so we could potentially divide that in there, but then of course we have the 1 plus there, so we could probably do something there, but I think I'm satisfied by not going any further and leaving it as such. Okay? If you check in the back of the book and they have it in a slightly different form, then you have to manipulate it algebraic a little bit more. All right, now let's look at our second problem. I'll draw a line here to delineate the two problems. And uh, here we have a quotient. We also have a product in the numerator, so we'll probably have to use a combination of quotient and product rules. So let's start. So this is equal to the denominator. Uh, wow, I'm going to run out of room. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give myself some more room by getting rid of the left F side of the board prime of here. x is equal to the denominator, which is 1 plus x times the tangent of x times the derivative of the numerator. Now that's a product, so I've used the product rule for that. So I take the first, sine of x, times the derivative of the secant of x, the second one, secant of x, that is the secant of x times the tangent of x. So secant of x times the tangent of x. So that's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second, secant of x times the derivative of the first, the derivative of the sine of x is the cosine of x. So that's cosine of x. All right, so now we have the first times the derivative, oh, the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator, which is the sine of x, times the secant of x, times the derivative of the denominator, <clears throat> times the derivative of this. Now, of course, the derivative of 1 is 0. And here we have a product. So here we have to use a product rule, which is the first, times the derivative of the second. The tangent of x, the derivative of that is the secant squared of x, secant squared of x, plus the second, which is the tangent of x, times the derivative of the first, which would be times 1. I'll just write it there just so you can see where that came from. Okay, now just to make sure we've got everything right. It's the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, which was the product, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, which there was also product in there, and then all divided by the denominator squared. That would be 1 plus x tangent of x quantity squared. Wow! That gets quite complicated, and so remember, just be very methodical and make sure you use the rules as they apply. Now we should probably try to simplify this a little bit if we can. <clears throat> so 1, x, 1 plus x times the tangent of x, hmm. 
So this is multiplied times that, and we don't have one of those on this side, so obviously, so obviously we cannot factor that out. Uh, we have the sine of x, we have the secant, which is 1 over the cosine, so that gives us the sine over the cosine, which is tangent, and we have the tangent. Ah, so that can be simplified somewhat. So, let's try that. 1 plus x times the tangent of x times the sine of x times the secant of x, and the secant is 1 over the cosine, so that's times 1 over the cosine of x times the tangent of x. So I just write it out so you can see it. So this becomes a tangent times a tangent, or tangent squared, plus the secant of x is 1 over the cosine of x, and times the cosine, that goes to 0. I'll just write it out. So 1 over the cosine of x times the cosine of x. So that simplifies. Okay, Minus the sine of x times the secant of x, and the secant is 1 over the cosine, so we can write that as 1 over the cosine of x, times... We could probably just leave that as x times the secant squared of x plus the tangent of x. Okay, secant of x is 1 over the cosine, so we don't know if we can do something there. We'll see. All right, simplifying this a little bit further, this is, oh, I forgot my denominator. Can do that. That is important. Sometimes we get lazy and we skip the denominator and keep going with the numerator. That's not a good idea. Always copy everything the way we had it before. Tangent of x, quantity squared, like that. Okay, so we have the sine of x over the cosine of x. That's the tangent times the tangent. That's the tangent squared. So this is equal to 1 plus x times the tangent of x times tangent times tangent, which is tangent squared of x. Okay, cosine divided by cosine is... 1. So we have this. So minus sine over cosine is tangent. So that would be the tangent of x times. Hmm. We could try it. Let's see here. Tangent over cosine. Ah, we'll just leave it like that. So there's different options. Plus the tangent of x. It doesn't mean that by changing the form you always get the right final answer. Uh, it depends. <clears throat> Simplifying is not a, an exact art per se. Like that. And, um, hmm, hmm, look at that. Now I see something that is quite interesting. I have a tangent squared of x plus 1 and a tangent, ooh, not quite the same, not quite the same. Hmm. But this is the same. Let me simplify that. So I'm going to divide this by that. So it gives me a tangent square of x plus 1 over 1 plus the tangent of x. So that's this portion right here simplified minus, <clears throat> then I have the uh, tangent of x times x times the secant square of x plus the tangent of x all divided by 1 plus the tangent of x squared. And that's pretty good. Again, that's not necessarily the, the, the exact format that you would find in the back of the book if you look at the answer. Uh, sometimes they'll give you something, a certain answer that they expect to see, and then you have to algebraically manipulate it a little bit more to make it look exactly like the answer. But this should be correct unless I made some mistake somewhere. Could happen, but I don't think so in this case. And so. That's the derivative of our original problem right there.